We hope to be in good health all the time. However, the reality isn't so perfect. There are many people who are living with serious or superficial illnesses. I'm one of them. I so wish I wasn't, but if it is what it is, I must find a way to live with it. Is it too much to ask my husband to understand this? My name is Sally. I'm a 29 years old working wife. It's been three years since my husband Tom and I got married. I suppose we still have a good relationship, except on one thing. Hey, Sally, wake up! I opened my eyes to the shaking of my body. I saw the face of Tom right in front of me. Oh, what happened? You fainted all of a sudden. My head was still spinning as I tried to pull myself up. Ugh, again, I was unruffled. I have low blood pressure and deal with cerebral anemia. It can happen even while I'm cooking on my feet. So I'm usually extra careful when the stove is on. I try to remember what I was doing and saw potatoes. Oh yeah, I was peeling potatoes. I felt a cold sweat at the thought of having symptoms while holding on a knife. I got freaked out by the loud noise and came to find you on the floor. What the hell are you doing? Shouldn't he have been more concerned? Tom never understood the symptoms of cerebral anemia. Even though I tried to explain to him numerous times, not only he could care less, but he looked annoyed. I didn't ask him to over worry, but a little bit of concern from his side would have been nice. Did I expect too much? I met him at work. We didn't have a weird wind romance, but we were passionate in love. Was it normal to change after marriage? We started dating because of my disorder in the first place. I felt dizzy and nauseous while I was chatting with my colleague, and passed out in the office. Tom came to my rescue, which was the start of our romance. He stopped taking care of me after the marriage. On the contrary, his attitude changed drastically. If you assume cerebral anemia is not a big deal, I can argue. Tom thought it was just anemia. And ordered me to take more iron supplements and eat more liver. He didn't care if there were different types of anemia. I had come to the realization that he wouldn't have listened even if I explained it. I no longer minded that he wasn't worried about me, but he seemed disgruntled. I lost my appetite. I'm going out. Why? It'd be ready soon. I don't want to eat anything cooked by someone who feeds just peeling potatoes. I feel more nauseated than you. I'm leaving. Wait, he let me pleading. I sighed, staring at the potatoes. It was a usual occurrence. He came up with an excuse to go out whenever I had symptoms, and didn't come back for hours. I thought he was taking extra time to come back on that day. But he shockingly stayed out until the next morning. It wasn't just going out, was it? I felt anxiety. One day, Tom mentioned there was something to tell me. Where is it? I decided to take my parents to Puerto Rico over the long holiday. Whoa, that sounds amazing! I clapped my hands to the exciting plan. Came to think of it. We never took a trip after our marriage. It was a little bit awkward to go with my in-laws, but we had a good relationship, so that it could be fun. Clear ocean, white sand beach, my bikini from last year still fit. My mind was filled with tropical island breeze, but then Tom said, "Uh-uh,、um, don't assume." I gave him a quizzical look. What do you mean? I'm going with my parents, and you are staying back. Why? I yelled out to his unexpected reply. Why should I stay back? 
You know you're not well, don't you? You pass out just 'cause you stand for a while. You can't even go on sightseeing. We can't enjoy our trip with you there. My symptoms aren't that bad. You're exaggerating. So wrong. I'm just being honest. My parents agree to. So you're staying. What? It's already been decided. No matter what, I already booked a hotel for three. I was lost for words as I watched him walk out the door. I was preparing dinner, but he let me alone again. I watched Tom cheerfully packing for his trip later on. I contemplated on protesting to his parents, but I was scared to destroy the good relationship I kept with them. Wait, they were the ones trying to break our good relationship. Even though I thought so, I couldn't find the courage to face them. Indeed, standing for a little while did make me faint. It was already too late when I felt dizzy and nauseous. I couldn't predict when the symptoms showed up. It was quite troublesome. I suppose I was a nuisance to have a holiday with. I needed to let it go. As I was thinking while staring blankly at the calendar, oh wait! I felt dizzy and nauseous. Damn! Too late. As my vision started to spin. I worried about sharp objects around me and passed out. Hey, Sally, wake up! <clears throat> I felt the sensation of something pushing my body as I heard Tom's voice. As I expected, I was lying on the floor. I opened my eyes and saw Tom standing over me. Tom, my God, that's enough! How many times do you have to pass out? Ouch! Stop it! You didn't seem to be coming back, so I help you. Be thankful. He was shoving me with his foot, all of things. Even though he wasn't actually kicking me, I couldn't believe he was using his foot. I shuffled to get up, but I still felt light-headed and nauseous that I couldn't get up. I'm feeling sick. As I lay back down on the floor, Tom clicked his tongue. No, it wasn't necessary. I was upset and wanted to confront, but I was too sick to say the word. What did he say to his poor wife next? Hey, I'm leaving now. Be good. I'd be mad if I come back to the mess because you slack on housework. No compassion whatsoever. Huh? Leaving? You know I'm going on a holiday. It's almost time for my flight. I'm on my way out. Wait a sec. Help me get up. Least help me get to the bed. Ugh. I'm gonna throw up. No way. Don't be such a baby for just a vertigo. There's still enough time to catch the plane, right? Don't you even have a decency to take your sick wife to the bed? My unspoken protest was clearly ignored, and he walked out the door. I laid on the floor alone as I watched the door close behind him. No way! That's diabolical. Are you pissed off? Of course I am. That's why I'm venting on you. I complained to my colleague next day. She was astounded and upset. See, anyone who wouldn't have thought it was terrible. After Tom left, I managed to get up on my own, and then cried going over what he just said. I had been feeling mistreated by him. But that was the coldest. My colleague's kindness wasn't enough to make me feel better. What am I going to do? I was feeling stressed when I received a call that night. I was drinking alone to ease my anxiety, as I saw the name on the screen and was surprised. It was my father-in-law. 
He was supposed to be on a trip with Tom. Did something happen to him? Sobering up at once, I answered the call in panic. Yes, hello. Oh, Sally, sorry to bother you at night. He sounded down. Don't worry. Is something wrong? It's kind of sudden. His words that followed astounded me. Next day, my phone kept vibrating in a quiet room. It was Tom calling. Hello. Hey, Sally. How's it going? It's sunny and amazing here. Have you been good? His cheerfulness annoyed me. I imagined him with a smug smile on the other side of the phone. I'm busy right now. What do you want? Why? You sound in a bad mood. Are you mad to be left behind? I'll get you a souvenir. What do you want? I let out a deep sigh to his lightheartedness and said, "I said I was busy. I'm at your mother's wake right now, so let's talk later." What? There was a long pause before he could finally make a word. His dumbness annoyed me even more. I said, "I was at your mother's wake." Huh? Wait, but what? Right, I was at that moment at mother-in-law's wake. I know it's a shock, isn't it? She's supposed to be with you in Puerto Rico. It can't be her awake. It is thought. Surprisingly, your father is here too. It's really strange, isn't it? He is also supposed to be with you. It's unbelievable, but all true. So, that's what is happening right now. I hang up on him, and turn off my phone. The wake was carried out peacefully. And it was a nightfall. Mother, what are you wearing? Tom showed up screaming when his family and relatives were having dinner. I had to remark on his appearance. He was dressed in a bright blue hibiscus print shirt. The way his just out of the tropical island look was stepped with cold stares. Why would you come to your mother's awake dressed like that? What? Oh, well, I came right from the airport. My phone was off, so he called his father. He rushed back as soon as he got the detail, and didn't think to change his clothes. Never mind. What's going on? You heard. Your mother passed away. It was last night. My father-in-law, who was supposedly on the trip with Tom, called me. Oh, Sally, sorry to bother you at night. He continued to say, "It's kind of sudden, but my wife just passed away." I dropped my beer from the shock. Liquid poured out on the floor, but I couldn't move. She suddenly collapsed at home this morning. I called an ambulance, but she didn't make it. The cause of death was a heart attack. I couldn't believe it. She looked healthy. I thought she was going to live for a long time. I couldn't believe it. She was supposed to be on the trip with Tom. I can't believe it. You're cheating on me. What? Tom froze, hearing my words. I didn't need to continue as someone else took over. You idiot! You lied and went on a holiday with your girlfriend. Dad, what do you mean? I was disgusted by the way he pretended and said, "Guess what? You left all the evidence at home, and you think I'm not gonna find them? In fact, I went through his things right after the call with my in-laws." As expected, I found millions of proof. There were many unexplainable transactions on his credit card, and hotel receipts. I found many photos of him and his girlfriend in his computer. The confirmation of his trip to came out. 
the number of guests shown on it was only two instead of three. Moreover, why do you post pictures of you and your girlfriends on social media? What are you thinking? Surprisingly, he posted pictures during the trip. He wasn't stupid enough to blatantly show two of them together, but her reflection was clear on the glass window in the pictures. What an idiot! Thank you for leaving proof. I have no affection towards someone who left me while I was sick. I can divorce with no regret. The divorce? Wait, it's not what you think. It's not. What's not? It's nothing but cheating, isn't it? No, it is not. He was unable to say anything else. Just go back to Puerto Rico. She's waiting for you, right? I rolled my eyes. He kept pleading, but he was silenced by the sudden roar. You fool! You're a disgrace of the family. Wait, what are you doing here? Why wouldn't I be awake on my sister-in-law? The one scolding was a brother of my father-in-law. In another words, uncle of Tom. At that moment, Tom finally realized that. Not only his dad and me, but the entire relatives were surrounding him. Wait, it's a misunderstanding. What did we misunderstand? Taking a trip with your girlfriend and leaving your wife behind? You even used your parents for your lie. That is because Tom couldn't say anything back, cornered by his uncle. His father too moved in front of him and said, "Tom, I'm ashamed to have a son like you. Besides, you show up dressed like that at your own mother's wake. I no longer think you as my son. I'm going to cut ties with you. Of course, you are terminated from your job. In fact, Tom worked in his family's business." He had never been able to keep his job anywhere. He was actually fired at a company where we met. After making many mistakes, his dad and uncle saved him then. No, that's not fair. Shut up. You disregard your wife when she falls ill, and go on a trip with your girlfriend. You are in no position to complain. You better pack up your things at work. Wait. Tom, wearing a cheerful high biscuit shirt, and turning white in panic, looked like a scene from the comedy. But that wasn't it. I added some stress on him. Don't come back home anymore. I packed up your stuff and sent them to your father's house. What? The th- How could you do such a selfish thing? Why not? The apartment is in my name. Did you forget? I have no interest in sharing it with a cheater. There's no space for you there. I can't let you in, even you show up. By the way, I changed the lock so you can't get in anyway. Oh my God! Tom screamed and crumbled down on the floor. Afterward, I hired a lawyer and divorced Tom. I got a large sum of alimony from him. As well as compensation from his girlfriend, the girlfriend who had never imagined to be charged was fed up with upless Tom, and they broke up. He had been spending a large amount of money on her, but after losing a job, he was unable to pay off his credit card debt. He loaned from his father and uncle. At the end, his father didn't allow him to move back in. So he is now living in a tiny, shabby apartment. His uncle managed to find him a job so that he could pay back his loan, but I hear the job is physically demanding. Sally, help me! I'm gonna collapse from exhaustion. He lamented over the phone. Really? If you collapse, I'll take a trip to Puerto Rico then. I replied. 
I laughed at Tom, who was stunned and hung up on him. Don't know what happened to him afterward, as I block him, but I assume he doesn't have a pleasant life. Years later, I met someone new. He is into wellness and understands my disorder. It might be for him. I've been experiencing that symptoms lately. Perhaps peace of mind is the best treatment. Seeing an embarrassed expression as he held out a ring to me, I'm excited by the prospect of a happy future. What the wife buys also becomes the husband's. If that's not acceptable, then let's divorce. My husband Charles tries to take things from me for unreasonable reasons. He even tries to give things I bought from my parents to my in-laws to make himself look good. But that's just. When I tell him the truth, he turned pale. Before I married Charles, my grandparents left me a gift. It was real estate. When I thanked my grandparents and told them that I was going to use it to help me and my husband in the future, they both frowned and advised me to keep it a secret. Even if Charles was my own husband, they told me to keep it a secret that I had a passive income and that I had enough to live on. I felt somewhat sorry for Charles, but I decided to follow my grandparents' advice. My grandfather, who cared for me, passed away, and as I continued my married life with Charles, an incident occurred. One day, when I checked the account where I saved my living expenses, I noticed that ten thousand dollars had been withdrawn from it. This account was mainly managed by me and was created to make ends meet for the living expenses that Charles brings into the house. It's such a large sum of money, but I had no memories of withdrawing it. This meant that the one who withdrew that amount was inevitably Charles. I immediately asked Charles about it when he came home that day. Hey, ten thousand dollars are missing from our living expenses account. Do you have any idea about what happened to the missing money? Yeah, I lent it to my mom. She was in some kind of trouble. He answered easily, and it was confirmed that Charles had lent it to my mother-in-law, Lisa. And you didn't tell me anything about it. It's okay. Besides, it's my money that I earned. We had some savings, so it's okay. That amount won't hurt. If Lisa was in trouble, well, you can't do anything but to help. But. A word or two to me would have been nice. The account is for both of us, after all. If it was his own account that he has set up when he was single, it would have been fine. But to withdraw a large sum of money from our shared account without saying anything was a bit too much. When I sighed heavily at Charles's selfishness, he frowned and gave me a look that looked very irritated. Okay, okay. I'll tell you next time. Charles dismisses it in a way that he was annoyed by it and quickly went to the bathroom. I didn't feel good at all at what had happened. He didn't behave like that when we were first married, and he used to listen to me sincerely. Is this what changing is like in a married relationship? A few days later. I had no choice but to go to my parents-in-law's house to hand over a package that had been sent to our house by mistake. Oh, Megan, thanks for coming all the way here. Why don't you come in since you came all the way? I had intended to leave them at the entrance, but I couldn't really refuse my parents-in-law, so I went to their living room to have a cup of tea. As I did so, I noticed a variety of things: luxurious cosmetic products, glamorous clothes, health products. Oh, my wonderful son gave them to me as a gift. There were ten thousand dollars in the bank account, after all, so it's only natural to spend it in such an obvious way. However. After knowing that Lisa was in need of money, in which Charles had lent her the money, 
I didn't really feel good about the fact that it was all spent on her luxurious products. As I sipped my tea without any smiles, my in-laws broke their smiling faces and said to me with a frightened look on their faces as if they were threatening me. My son is such a nice, wonderful boy who gets gifts for me, but what about you? That's right. As his wife, are you serving my wonderful son well? There's something fishy going on. I heard, you know. He said that he gets blamed a lot from you for taking out the money to spend for me. I completely understand now. Charles had told my parents-in-law as if he was the victim for doing something good, which would explain why they looked at me with fear. I gradually grew tired of my in-laws and my husband. I had never expected to be treated so horribly and neglected like this. And finally, I began to think about divorce. I thought that if I divorced him, I would eventually return to my parents' house and rebuild their home using the savings I had from the passive income. My parents' home is a two-story house that was built before my brother was born and it is over 30 years old. The family of five used to live there, but after my brother and I left home, it became empty and even though a ramp and handrails to help my parents were partially installed into their house, it was too spacious and difficult for my parents who are not very good with their legs. This would mean that a cozy one-story house would be much better for them to live in. I immediately called my parents to tell them that I was thinking of getting a divorce and rebuilding their house. As to my surprise, my parents were not shocked about the divorce and they were so happy to hear about the idea of rebuilding their home and so I could tell more about it to them over the phone. I'm glad that you're planning to rebuild it for us. Thank you. Even if we won't be living there for long, it won't be a problem since you can take over the house as it was built with your income. Well then, I'll start preparing and planning it bit by bit. Take it easy. Just don't overdo it. My dad and mom's words restored my depression immediately. Then, I started to rebuild my parents' house and I was just waiting to hear from the construction company when Charles suddenly confronted me. How dare you use our savings to build a house without telling me anything about it! As soon as we sat down facing each other at the living room table, Charles started to bang his fist on the table while yelling at me. He continues to yell without regarding any of my feelings. Well. My parents will live in the new house then. No, that's impossible because it was built for my parents to live in. You built it with our common property, so my parents have the right to live in it. Are you planning to cram four people into that little one-story house? Shut the hell up. Just give me the house then. Charles screams as he hits the table noisily. If I didn't tell him about the passive income I had, he would get even more heated when he found out. I decided to tell him the whole truth. To tell you the truth, I have passive income. I've actually been making savings from the real estate that was gifted to me by my grandparents. I pay for it from that passive income, so I didn't take a penny out from our common property. As I felt guilty for having broken a promise with my grandparents, Charles, who is in front of me, shook his shoulders with a wince and began pounding the table even harder. What a bad wife you are, hiding the fact that you have an income! You play around with my money and protect your own like that by keeping it a secret! Seeing his face turn red with his anger rising, I thought I understood why my grandparents told me to keep my passive income a secret. Just maybe, my grandparents had already figured out that Charles was that kind of person. Listen, 
I'll take the house as alimony. Besides, the house you built as my wife is mine too. I am the head of the family, and if you disobey me, I will divorce you. I felt nothing but dismay at my husband's insistence, and I was fed up with him. How could I have lived with such a man without knowing it? I had originally intended to use the passive income when we could no longer depend on Charles's income. I was hoping that if I was unable to work due to injury or illness, I could use them to help make ends meet. I was going to save it to maintain my life with Charles and let him know about it when the time came, but... Now, I have no desire to spend that money on him anymore. Be my guest. I got up from my seat and left the house. I didn't want to be near Charles. I decided to stay at a business hotel for the day, cool off, and return the next day. However, when I returned home the next morning, Charles was waiting for me with a disgusting smile on his face. He approached me with a smirk on his face and held out a sheet of paper he was holding behind his back. It was divorce papers. And they were already filled out. You, you're lying about your passive income, aren't you? You lied about having passive income because you wanted to get away with the fact that you were actually taking money out of our common property, didn't you? My husband's argument is still the same and I couldn't understand him at all. As my part, I sincerely told him the truth and I didn't lie at all. It's the truth. I have passive income. Here you go again. I know that you can't live without me. Charles snickered and forced the divorce papers into my hand. And then he says, You'll let me know when we can move in, okay? I'm gonna go out for a drink. After saying that, he pat me on the shoulders and walked out humming in a good mood. Now I knew exactly who Charles was. He had not changed, and he had just hidden it from me that he had been looking down on me from the beginning of our marriage. He had never once given my feelings any real consideration. I immediately packed my belongings, filled out the divorce papers on the spot, and left home. I decided to move in with my parents for the time being and explain the situation to them, and we agreed to stay together until the house was finished. The next day, I was dismayed to see my cell phone's incoming call logs filled with Charles's number. Then, as if to follow up, I received a phone call from him. I pressed the call button and answered it, hoping that this would be the last conversation I would ever have with him. Hello? Hey, all your stuff is gone, you know? My husband's impatient tone left me with nothing but questions. He was the one who had confronted me with a divorce, so why was he panicking when all I did was just leave him? Huh? We are getting a divorce, so that's normal. I won't ever come back, so please use the empty spaces as you please. I wondered if he sensed something in the way I spoke to him. My husband was silent for a few minutes. Apparently, he now finally understood that I had passive income. Then, after a few moments of silence, he said in a very sweet voice I had never heard before, Hey, hey, can you let my parents live in the new house? I don't care if I have to live with your parents, please. I told you before already that it's a small one-story house. Please. I said I'd surprise my parents with a house. My husband's words left me speechless. What in the world was he thinking? giving them a house that he didn't even buy. And to announce it as a surprise was beyond reckless. You don't really care about the savings, do you? 
You have no idea how much I was worrying about the money I would give to you as an allowance, and the money I would save for the living expenses, and how much I was trying to make ends meet. That has nothing to do with what's happening here. You are just careless with money, and leaves only the hassle to other people, and you present to your parents as if you prepared everything by yourself, right? When all of this has been prepared by me, for my parents. Th that's... My husband suddenly clammed up, and my frustration only grew. It's so shallow of him to make it seem as if he planned it all himself and give the house to his parents. In the end, he was just trying to take advantage of my pure feelings and take over my property. There is no reason for him to go so far as to trample on my feelings and intentions. I will not give you the house I built with all my heart and soul for my parents for you so that you can just show off to your parents. I rejected Charles's idea once and for all and he began to rant extra loudly. But husbands and wives are supposed to help each other. I'll tell them that you built it. Please. We're not a married couple anymore, are we? Huh? I'm saying that we are strangers now since I already filed for divorce. On the very day my husband, or rather my ex-husband, handed me the divorce papers, I had submitted them to the city office. He had wanted a divorce so badly, and I felt sorry for him if I didn't leave him as soon as possible. I was already in the process of changing all the paperwork to what it was when I was still unmarried. My ex-husband said in a tone of disbelief. You, you already filed it? Why are you so surprised when you're the one who asked for the divorce? Uh, I didn't think that you would really leave me. Hey, let's start over. Let's talk it out and try to be a good couple this time. How can he say such a ridiculous thing now? This is a man who spent our savings on his own mother, threatened me for a divorce, and made fun of me to the very end. There is no way I would ever want to get back together with a person like him. No, thank you. Please give my regards to your parents. I said it brightly as I hung up his call. The next day, I continued to receive voicemails and messages from Charles demanding that we get back together. He told me that we could still start over, that he loved me, but I felt that he was only after my property and fortune. In order to completely cut ties with him, I immediately blocked all contact information related to him and his parents. In the meantime, the house was rebuilt and my parents and I moved into our new house and are living comfortably. Later. I had a chance to meet with a mutual friend who also knew Charles, and I explained to her that Charles and I were divorced. My friend gave me some words of sympathy and told me what had happened to him and his family. First of all, my ex-husband suddenly submitted a letter of resignation at his workplace, saying that he no longer needed to work hard because he had acquired real estate and no one at the company could get in touch with him. However, the next day, he apparently offered to withdraw his resignation letter. His bosses, of course, lectured him about how he suddenly disappeared without any prior notice and what leaving only his resignation letter had caused and that he didn't realize how much trouble he had caused the employees around him. The company had asked what was going on with him but there was no way Charles could say that he was relying on his wife's income, so he tried to lie about his situation. However, in the end, the company easily found out the reason why he had a divorce with me. He could no longer make up any lies, and the company had refused him to be rehired. Charles, who had made fun of my passive income, saying it was probably a lie anyway, was trying to take advantage of my earnings. 
as well as showing off to his parents to give them a house as a present, he didn't think about me or our future whatsoever. When I think of that, I no longer have any feelings for my ex-husband. In fact, I feel refreshed. I heard that my ex-husband has returned to his parents' home, but his parents must have been very hard on him because he's now trying to find himself a new job. But he seems to be having a hard time finding a new job because of the reason why he left his last job. I can only say that he got what he deserved. As for me, I live with my parents in a house I built myself. I have a job I always wanted to do, and I am enjoying my life. I have been saving my passive income for Charles and our future, but now I will use it in the future to support those who have been supporting me.